Speaking about divine light, it's important for us to go back to the very beginning when the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to create man. He definitely would never have left mankind without showing him or explaining to him why he was created. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to send messengers in order for these messengers to convey to us all as mankind why he created us. Sometimes we sit and we ponder over the creation of the Almighty and we look into ourselves and we feel that the life we have is complete. It is full. It is unique. And it is such sometimes we feel that it's not so easy for me to die right here, right now and meet my creator. This is what sometimes the human mind or human nature makes us feel. Because a lot of the times we would think that I am healthy. I'm a person who is uh, not suffering any disease. Perhaps I'm sitting at home. Perhaps I'm in a comfort zone, not realizing that no matter how healthy we are, no matter how wealthy we may be, no matter how easy our life might be, there will come a day when we will depart, when we will leave this world. And the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us that the average lifespan of the members of my ummah is between 60 and 70 years. So those who live below 60 have perhaps lived below the average. And those who have clocked 70 would now be living on that which would be known as ab above average. It is easier for us to prepare for the day we meet with our maker when we become older. But the winner is he or she who can be prepared at any given time to meet their maker, his or her maker. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. The reason why I start in this way is because belief is very, very closely connected to the message that the Almighty has sent and accepting it, understanding that this life is in fact temporary. It is something that does not last forever. No matter how healthy you are, a day will come when you and I shall be gone. Just like those before us have already left. They have left, yet they were healthier than us and they had more wealth than us. Take a look at Harun, for example, one of the men who was there at the time of Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, and at the time of the Pharaoh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَهْلَكَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مَنْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُ قُوَّةً مَنْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُ قُوَّةً وَأَكْثَرُ جَمْعًا This Qarun, who was a tyrant, has he not seen that we have destroyed nations who were more powerful than him, greater in number, more in might, or have, has he not seen and learned a lesson from that? We ask the Almighty to grant us goodness. The point being made is he was powerful and before him were people who were mightier, who had left. A lot of us would look at this life as being that which we need to cling to and we need to enjoy as much as we can do as we please, not realizing that we should be enjoying, but within the parameters shown to us by the light that was sent to us from the Almighty who made us in the first place. Someone has made us. We are not here tonight, coincidentally. You made an effort to come here. Someone brought you here or you drove yourself here. You made an effort to be here. MashaAllah, you've come up with some warm clothing as well, seeing that it's quite cold this evening, Alhamdulillah. But would you suddenly have a jacket on you without you having made any effort? You know, you just feel cold and next thing you have a beautiful jacket and it's on you. That doesn't happen. Similarly, we are not coincidentally here in this world. We did not just come up for no reason and we will then just die without anything to come. Rather, we were put here by a maker and that's what we believe. And this maker, we are answerable and responsible to him. And it would be wrong for the maker to have brought us into this world without having given us direction. So he sent for us the guiding light. From the very beginning, the light came through the Prophet Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, or we may call him the forefather. Our, our father who we say is 
the greatest grandfather that we would know, Adam, may peace be upon him. The light came, the instruction came. He was told, he was taught. He taught his children and his children taught theirs and so on. And every so often, the Almighty sent messengers. With them, he sent the light. What was this light? A set of instructions. Why have I made you? What is this life all about? And this is why, if you take a look at those who have forgotten that they are going to return to a maker, and they do as they please in this world, many a time you would find that they do not enjoy the life. No matter what they have, they are still not happy. They want more. And this is why the messenger, peace be upon him, has told us that the son of Adam is such that if you were to give him a valley full of gold, he would want another one. You know, sometimes we sit and mashallah, I see, you know, perhaps a lot of us here are expatriate people who've come here to work. Let me give you this example. We have people who come from humble beginnings and they shift to a country like this thinking that we're going to earn a little bit of money and perhaps we will then, you know, buy something back at home or invest and try and get ourselves settled and perhaps our children and so on. And maybe we would be happy with the first million dollars. And then what happens is you make the mark, you hit the million. And when you hit the million, do you stop? The answer is no. You start looking at the next million. And when you hit two million before you know it, 10 million. Allahu Akbar. And before you know it, you want more because now you own half the buildings in your little city. And the next thing you want to be a big boss. So it doesn't stop. This is explained by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The son of Adam, if you were to give him a valley full of gold, he'd want another one. A second one, he'd want a third one. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us goodness. He who is disciplined and understands that yes, we should be enjoying the life in this world as best as we can on condition that we do not compromise the pleasure of our own maker is the one who is the happiest in this world. The one who has the most contentment. Sometimes you can actually see on the face, this person is so content. They are so happy yet they have imposed upon themselves the restrictions that they have found in the guiding light. So now if we were to look at the Quran, for example, and although we do accept the Bible and the Old Testament and so on in its original form, we do believe that there are a few discrepancies and it has been changed over time. As you know, so many versions and so on. So we will be citing the Quran because without doubt, there is no change in it. And this is a challenge that has been made from the very beginning and repeated today where there is no difference in the Quran that we would read and that which was read 1400 odd years ago. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ease of understanding this guidance and the light and the revelation. So Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except for a purpose. What is that purpose mentioned in this particular verse? Except for them to engage in ibadah. Ibadah meaning to obey the instructions that have been laid down in the divine light and abstain from the prohibitions to worship the Almighty. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that.